Hi, right, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Mark here again. Just a short video today really guys, and what I thought I'd do is just continue a little bit uh, with the fire theme which I've started off. What I thought I'd do is talk to you about this stuff, potassium permanganate. Now potassium permanganate has been around for centuries, and it's also the kind of stuff when I was a kid that my nan would keep in a medicine cabinet. And I'm pretty sure uh, if I knew then what I knew now, that that garden shed would have got set on fire years ago. Now, uh, John Lofty Wiseman actually wrote a good section in the uh, SAS of our land book all about the potassium, its uses in first aid, signalling, fire starting, water purification, that kind of thing. So what I thought to do today is just uh, talk to you just about uh, a few of those uses, but also a couple of ways which actually get it ignited and combusting down here in the woods. So the way which uh, you see a lot of people using potassium for manganate and also the chemical reaction is to use uh, glycerin. Now, Glycerin, just like uh, the potassium, very easily available. I actually brought this bottle this morning, uh, just from the chemist, it cost £1.50. Just so I can show you, you know, just how uh, the, the reaction works. But glycerin in its own right is probably worth carrying in a, in a kit of some description. You know, people say that it works as an insect uh, repellent also. If you've got any kind of insect bites, it works for that. And if you also mix it with the ash from a fire, it also uh, makes quite an effective soap. So uh, probably worthwhile carrying. Like I say, I've just got it in the big bottle here, just for uh, demonstration purposes, but like I can do is just to cant it, just in a small plastic bottle, and use it to get uh, a fire going with the potassium, but also using it for other items as well. So I'm just gonna just sprinkle out some of the crystals here, just on this piece of wood. Now, uh, I have read that uh, if the temperature's below room temperature, that this kind of fire doesn't work, but uh, believe me, I have actually used it in colder conditions than what it is today, and uh, it does work, no problem at all. So, just applying just a little drizzle just over the top there. Now, when you uh, look on survival websites, they talk about using antifreeze and brake fluid, which again, you know, gets this stuff uh, combusting really fast and really, really aggressive. But uh, in this cooler temperature, this is probably what they're referring to. It does actually take quite a bit longer for the chemical reaction to take place and perhaps what it would do if the temperature was warmer. So I'm just going to mix it up uh, quite thoroughly. Excuse the uh, the shooting that's going on over there. There's uh, obviously some pheasants which are having a bad morning. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave that to uh, to start the reaction. Now it could take 30 seconds. It could take a few minutes. So uh, what I'm going to do is just leave that, sit back, and wait for the magic to happen. So as you saw there, quite a volatile uh, combustion using the glycerin and also the potassium. Now uh, if you use something like brake fluid or antifreeze, I don't know if it's something to do with the higher concentrate of ethanol in it, but uh, the combustion is a lot more fierce. But uh, down here in the woods, I don't have them kind of things with me and uh, I may not have glycerin with me, but one thing which I do carry in my pack 99% of the time, certainly in my brew kit, is sugar. So what I'm gonna do for you now is just pan the camera down and just show you just a quick way of using the sugar and the potassium and a little bit of friction of just how easy it is just to get a fire started. So instead of using the, uh, the bit of wood like I did just, I'm just going to, uh, just to show you, just a demonstration here just on the lid of the, uh, the Trangium S10. Just makes things just a little bit easier for me and just uh, probably just make things just a little bit easier for you to see as well. So again, I'm just going to Sprinkle out some of the potassium and then just add some of the sugar. Obviously it doesn't have to be out of one of these sachets. It's just convenient for me just to uh, just to bring these. And then just using the uh, 
the bottom of a stick and what we're going to do is just start off just by mixing it and then we're going to just get the stick put it in and I'm just going to grind it and what that happens then is just the friction of the sugar should help just get the combustion going just with the potassium here now I like using flint and steel I've seen it go up first time or I've actually got it go up first time or sometimes it can take uh, quite a little while now I'm not sure if that's down to the quality of the potassium sure you know this kind of stuff's coming from all over the place just like magnesium does and also ferro rods you find different qualities and that and uh, maybe they're the same and with the potassium you know I have seen uh, quite large crystals and these ones here they're quite small so whether that has anything to do with it I don't really know then we're just going to grind it just to try and create just this little bit of heat And every now and again you can see the small little sparks and there it goes and then what you do at that point because the only fuel that we got really is the sugar and it is burning quite aggressive you could just uh, start just putting your tinders on and just get your fire lit just using this way Well guys, that's it for this one. Just a short video really. I just wanted to touch on the subject of the potassium for manganate and also a little bit about the fire lighting and also just a couple of the uses which you could also use it for. So uh, if you want to use it with the glycerin, the sugar and the friction, antifreeze or brake fluid, it all ends in the same result, which is fire. And that just leaves me just to say thanks a lot again for stopping by and watching the video like always. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I'd just also like to wish you all a happy Christmas. Eat, drink and be merry and all that. And I shall be back in the, in the new year with some new videos and uploads. So until then guys, take care and I'll see you again.